Grüezi YouTubers. Here is the guy with the Swiss accent again. In video number 62 I presented five possibilities to improve visibility in the electronics lab. There the most expensive device was a binocular microscope. When I recently bought one I had some difficulties to get a good decision because the prices varied from about 200 up to more than $1000 even at the usually cheap sources. At the beginning I was completely lost because I did not know where these price differences come from. In this video I try to guide you through the different variants and the plus and minus of them. Maybe I can help you to understand the choices and to get the best solution for your money. Let's start. But first of all, why do we need a binocular microscope? It is the most comfortable way of dealing with the today's challenges of miniaturization because you get extremely clear and three-dimensional images and the working distance between the devices and the lenses is big enough that you can solder or do assembly work. If you watch TV or films, each decent lab is equipped with these devices. Unfortunately, I cannot show you the real pictures on YouTube. All you see here is way worse than what you see in reality because it's not 3D and my camera is not really good. I also did not spend too much for it. What is the difference between a microscope and a binocular or stereo microscope we use in our electronic lab? The most important one is that you can use both eyes and get a three-dimensional picture. Also, the magnification is much lower and the working distance is much bigger. Most microscopes illuminate the goods from the bottom. Our binoculars illuminate the goods from the top. This is why you can use binoculars without a dedicated table and put your goods just on the lab bench. This can be important if you have grounded working mats. Therefore, normal microscopes cannot be used for electronic works. Only if you want to have a close look at layers in integrated circuits. To understand your choices, it's best to start with the different parts of a binocular microscope. Its heart is the viewing head with the optics. You can choose between binocular heads and trinocular heads, which offer an additional attachment for a camera. The head has a basic magnification factor, which is part of the overall magnification factor of the microscope. On the top of the head you find two eyepieces which connect your eyes with the head. For trinoculars you also have a so-called port for your camera. The eyepieces and the port have magnification factors which are also part of the overall magnification factor. On the bottom of the head we find the Barlow lens. Also this lens has a magnification factor. The whole head is attached to a boom stand and the stand is attached to a base. These are the basic parts of all bi or trinocular microscopes. In addition, you usually need also illumination to have a good view on your working area. Fortunately, many microscopes are built in a modular way which means you can combine a base with several heads and the head with different eyepieces or Barlow lenses. The illumination is usually anyway an additional component. Some of the parts like eyepieces are not expensive and can be replaced later if you need. Other parts are expensive and cannot be changed easily. Here you have to make the right decision before your initial purchase. Let's start with these parts. The most expensive part usually is the head. Here you have three important choices. First. Do you want variable magnification? Second, do you need a camera port? Third, do you want to operate the camera in parallel to viewing with your own eyes or will the eye view be switched off during camera operation? Variable magnification is very comfortable because you can zoom in to a detail if you need it. Without a variable magnification, you either have to change the eyepieces or the Barlow lens to do so. The magnification factor in this case usually is doubled right away 
and you do not have any magnification in between. Unfortunately, this feature is also the most expensive decision. I spent the money for a variable magnification and I think it is worth every dollar I spent. The two other decisions are easier to do. Because I do YouTube videos, I had to buy a trinocular with a camera port and with my microscope I can run the camera in parallel to the eye view. The next important decision is the base, stand and boom. Here you basically have two choices. Do you want the base as your working area or do you want to work on your lab bench? If you can accept to use the base of the microscope as a stage, you can go with a lightweight version. The base can be lightweight because the force of the head is right above the working table. If you want to do soldering or assembly, however, this might be a little tricky. If you want to work on your lab bench, you have to go with a heavyweight base. In this configuration, the head is on the opposite side of the base and therefore a big counterweight is necessary to get stability. Usually, you also get the boom together with the base. The boom for opposite configurations usually also has a counterweight because it enables the easy horizontal movement of the head. In this configuration, you also can turn the microscope away from your working space if not needed. To do so, you need a fixing ring below the boom. If you loosen the boom, you can turn it easily. Because you cannot turn the head away, the lightweight base microscope usually need distinct place on your bench or you get them for your work and stow them away later. Because the head is quite heavy and you want also some distance from the stand, a heavy base must be really heavy. Here you see how much mine weights and I cannot easily carry it around. Because of its high specific weight, I'm quite sure it must contain some lead. Of course, the heavy base with its stable boom is more expensive. My boom has a very good quality. The finish is excellent and the movement are very easy. I cannot imagine that I would wish more. These were the important choices and decisions. If you browse through the internet, you see that microscope with a similar quality binocular head, a fixed magnification and a lightweight base cost less than half the price of a trinocular with a heavy base. So for casual usage, you're okay with a microscope in the $300 range. Its optical quality is usually okay and the price difference comes from other features as discussed before. Now we come to the magnification factors. For electronics work, we only need small magnification factors of 3 to 10 times. Why is this? If you work on your PCBs, you have to have a certain overview on where you are. With higher magnifications, your view angle is smaller and it becomes very hard to work. This is also why you have to look for so-called wide field eyepieces. They should get you a larger view with the same magnification factor. Variable heads usually have a magnification of about 0.7 to 4.5. The normal eyepieces have a factor of 10, which means we are already at magnifications of 7 to 45, which is already too high. This is why you can combine this configuration with a Barlow lens with a magnification factor of 0.5. Now we are at 3.5 to 22.5, which in my daily work is absolutely sufficient. I could have saved the money for a times 2 Barlow lens, which goes up to magnification of 2 times 45 is 90. Now we come to the last important part, the illumination. These microscopes give you a spectacular view on your devices or parts but only if you illuminate them properly. Properly means also no shadows. As said at the beginning, we use reflected light for our purpose. This is why it's easiest to place the illumination right around the lens of your microscope head. Today, most of these ring illuminations are equipped with LEDs. Here, the brighter, the better. Usually, they are also dimmable. I purchased my trinocular microscope from China and I'm quite happy with it. 
you find the link in the description to the store. Cindy also was very helpful when I was not sure what to buy. The optical and mechanical quality of my scope is very good. But of course, because it's so heavy, transportation cost is also high. So it might be better for you to purchase locally, especially in the US where Amazon sells the Amscope microscope, which are similar to mine. Now we come to the last part, the camera. Cameras are attached to the camera port. This is more or less a hole. In addition to the port, you need a camera lens adapter and a camera. The cameras usually use a so-called C-mount standard and my adapter has a 0.5 magnification factor. First, I tried to connect my normal Sony camcorder to this lens using a C-mount adapter. This was not possible because the camcorder has a quite big sensor and therefore the picture of the adapter was much smaller than the sensor. So I purchased a special camera for this purpose which has a smaller sensor and also a smaller resolution. I had to do some fiddling to get sharp pictures because the distances were not completely correct. But finally, with the help of my 3D printer, I get decent pictures as you can see in this video. I can shoot videos and stills, but please do not judge the quality of the microscope from the pictures of the camera. The optical quality is much, much better and cannot be compared with the results of the camera. Here, unfortunately, you have to believe me. Summarized, there are many good reasons to buy a decent binocular microscope. Variable magnification factor is an important but also expensive factor. Whether you want to work on the bench or on the stage of the microscope is another important factor, which influences the price. The most important thing, however, is that we only need magnification factors of 3 to 20. And last but not least, a camera adds a substantial cost to your purchase. I hope this video was useful or at least interesting for you. Bye.